I wish you were here now, Quincy. You were always there for me when I needed you. Even now, it's your friends who've made me strong enough to carry out what I must do. First, it was Father Janos who started me on this agonizing task. Now, with the aid of your old allies, it looks like we'll end this horrible scourge. So much has happened these past few days. Mr. Alexander Morris. Thank you. Alexander. Arthur, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness while I've been in your city. And now for you to sponsor me in London's most prestigious club. Nonsense. Your brother and I were extremely close. Here, let me introduce you to some of the other members of the Hades Club. Devlin. Alexander, I'd like you to meet Devlin Goldacre. Devlin, Alexander Morris. I believe I've mentioned his late brother, Quincy. Yes, you have. Mr. Goldacre, this certainly is a pleasure. It will be an honor to be accepted into your club. So, this is the brother of the famous Quincy Morris. <laughs> I suppose even London isn't big enough for more than one Texan at a time. What brings you here? Well, it's an unusual story, really. I received a letter from a Romanian priest telling me I should investigate the circumstances surrounding my brother's stabbing. Ah, your Romanian priest couldn't have directed you to a more peculiar city. And now, with the murders in the newspapers... <laughs> oh, do shut up, Leopold. Never mind our Czechoslovakian drunk and his ramblings. So, how long have you been in our fair city? Well, a number of months, actually. I got a bit sidetracked from my investigation when I met Anisette. Since we became engaged and her father took ill, I really haven't had the time to pursue the matter further. Yes, well, <laughs> I can see how Anisette could have that effect on a man. <laughs> Excuse me, sirs. I have a message from Mr. Morris. For me? Thank you. Good Lord. It's a note from Mr. Bowen's doctor. Mr. Bowen has just suffered a fatal heart attack. I have sedated Miss Bowen and would appreciate your presence tomorrow morning. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, perhaps I should go home. I could do with some rest as well. Pardon me. Death is such a dreadful business. <sighs> and a set? Anna said you must let him go. Andrew is gone. I know, but it's so hard. I miss him so. Let me call the doctor to remove his body. The sooner he's in the ground, the sooner his soul can rest. You think <laughs> that death can take her from me? Oh, Daddy. Anna said, no! Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Better bundle your coat, sir. We're here. A good day to you, driver. Aren't a good day to you, sir. I'm so glad you're here. Shh, it's all right. Where's the doctor? He's gone. He said it was a heart attack brought on by shock. Shock? An open window in this weather. I shall have to talk with Miss Culpepper. Oh, Alexander, I'm so tired. Why do things have to go away? Why can't all the things we love stay forever? I went to comfort Anisette in her time of grief. Poor Andrew. I cannot forget his face. Horrible. Locked in sheer terror, and white as the odd bit of cloth clutched in his hand. Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa. Kensing. Good day, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. Morris, isn't it? Mr. Goldacre, indulge my curiosity. 
Why has Arthur sponsored you into our distinguished club? What in the world makes you think you belong? A gift, really, because of his friendship with my brother. Do you know how old this club is? Now, Arthur tells me that it dates to the turn of the century. He's wrong. It's far older than that. Typical of you Americans. You can't think any farther back than your own whelp history. Age is no indication of virtue. Take your immortal institution here. What does Hades Club mean, anyway? It's rather obvious. Abandon all hope, ye who enter. We're in hell, my boy. I was amazed to discover what a rude bore Devlin Goldacre really is. He's quite unhappy with my membership in his club, and told me so in no uncertain terms. Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westman. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. Arthur is busy just now. I'm sure he'll be with you in a moment. Yes, he was my carriage driver. Ah. I had sent him to deliver this package and was beginning to wonder about his late return. Well, where was this package bound, sir? To the residence of Mr. Jonathan Harker. Oh, but... Let's 56, Rochester, Marble Arch. <laughs> it was a gift for his son, young Quincy. Well, thank you so much, sir. Well, I suppose this belongs to you, then. <laughs> we found it by the body. Decapitation is a most horrible crime. Strange. There's no accounting for the blood loss. What a grisly shock. I went to visit Arthur Holmwood only to discover that his coachman had been killed, decapitated, with complete loss of blood. I cut my visit short, but not before learning Jonathan Harker's address. Where will Betsy be taking us today, sir? Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. That paper's not for a weak order today of uh, those who loses their heads easily. <laughs> right, messy it is. That fella with his head cut off and all, his blood gone. Ooh. Oh, he needs a drink. It's still a saucy jack when this day's over. A saucy jack? Haven't you heard of it, Gov? The best pub in the Strand. Me mouth is watering already for a mug of Rebecca's ale. <laughs> I found some curious articles in the paper and pasted them below. Gruesome murder in West End. Murder most foul was committed in the West End last evening. The body of George O'Keefe, 47, was found at 7.30 a.m. near a tavern of dubious repute. Reports indicate the victim was lured into an alley, beaten and decapitated. The victim's head was left near the body. Oddly, no blood was found at the scene suggesting the crime was committed elsewhere. The deed is attributed to a series of bizarre murders plaguing the city. Mr. O'Keefe was coachman to Lord Godalming and has no survivors. Retirement. A.R. Sheerman, Chief Accountant to the Bank of England, has retired after 10 years of service. He gave ill health as the reason. Sheerman replaced the previous Chief Accountant, Oswald Mason, whose mysterious murder was solved by the consulting detective, Sherlock Holmes. Mysterious Livestock Deaths Farmers in Houston have complained to the local constabulary about the mysterious deaths of sheep and cattle. The animal corpses have been found lying in their fields, drained of blood. Closer examinations have revealed puncture wounds near the jugular veins of the poor creatures. This is Father Janos' calling card. He lives in Bistritz, Romania. We're off, sir, as soon as you tell me where you'd like to go. Twenty-three Luxborough in King's Cross, driver. Good day, driver. Good day, sir.
Hello. I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Bistritz. In Romania. In Romania. I have dispatched a telegram to Father Janos. It reads, I have arrived in England and am looking into the circumstances of Quincy's death. Strange things are happening here. Please reply soon. Where will Betsy be taking us today, sir? 56 Rochester and Marble Arch, driver. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. Those are beautiful flowers, Mrs. Harker. Oh, I thank you, Mr. Morris. Well, I do love roses. They remind me of someone I once knew. Fragile, beautiful, and dangerous. And how are you, Mr. Morris? Well, I'm fine, but I'm worried about my fiancée, Anisette. Her father, Andrew Bowen, just passed away. Oh, how terrible. I'm sorry to hear it. I knew Mr. Bowen from business affairs. Poor Anisette. Well, I should tell her you send your condolences. But I'm afraid that's not all. The Homewood's carriage man has been, well, murdered. He was on his way to deliver a present to little Quincy. He was found decapitated, his body drained of blood. Mina, have you looked in on Quincy? Not for a while, no. Perhaps you should. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, but I have some pressing matters which I must attend to. But I wanted to if talk to you about... If you wish to talk business, then come to my office. I went to the Harkers to inform them of the bad news. I found it odd that Jonathan seemed more disturbed by the death of a stranger than that of Andrew Bowen. Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. How's the day treating you? That could be better. Oh, I hate to see one of me customers in the mouse. <laughs> Tell you what, you give me your name and I'll get you a mug of ale on the apps. Wow, Alexander Morris at your service. My name's Rebecca Eaton. I'm the owner of this fine establishment. Oh, careful, this one, Becky, is moody. Could be the murderer. <laughs> oh, keep your mouth shut. Don't mind them, they scared. Count of all the people being killed. Real unnatural like, too. Heads cut off and the body's all dry of blood. Hey, I'd lose my head for you, Becky. Oh, come on. <laughs> Strange killings, they is. That woman in white been seen all over London. It's like that bloofer lady years ago. Bloofer? What kind of name is that? Never heard the like of four or since. She's a woman what bit young'uns on the neck. Where'd you hear this? I read it in a book. I was delivering a bunch of them to that bookstore in King's Cross. What's it called? Let's see. <laughs> the noggin's gone all rusty. Goldstein and Horn, Goldfield. Gold Acre? Yay, that's it. Gold Acre and Horn. <laughs> I found my way to the Saucy Jack, a pub full of local gossips. The regulars were eager for an audience, and I was told of the grisly murders and the eerie blue for lady. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. A good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. May I help you? Mr. Horner? Alexander Morris. Mr. Holmwood has sponsored me into the Hades Club. I understand your partner's also a member? Oh, yes. Devlin mentioned you. It'll be a pleasure having you in our club. What brings you to my little bookstore? Well, this might sound a little bit strange, but I've been told you have a book about the Bluefer Lady. The Bluefer Lady? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. She would appear as a beautiful ghost-like woman with a horrible practice. And she would summon children only to return them later, some on the verge of death. 
the children would call her Blufa instead of beautiful. Yes, there's a striking resemblance to some other cases I know of. Uh, how much do I owe you? A gift from one Lord of Hell to another. From the library of Dr. John Seward, perfectly to sign him. Hmm. Well, I do believe I've found the most curious bookstore in London. I've never seen such an odd collection of books. Horner certainly seems to know his business when it comes to ghastly legends. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. What do you want? Alexander Morris to see Dr. Seward. The doctor's busy. The loonies is acting up. Now go away! <laughs> Grab him! <laughs> Here, take this. You may need it. I'll see it till the doctor gets your car. <laughs> It seems that Dr. Seward is a busy man. I couldn't see him today because his loonies are acting up. Perhaps I'll try him again later tonight. Good day, sir. Where am I I'll be taking you? I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. A good day to you, driver. Right, have a good day, sir. Yes, I'm here to see Mr. Holmwood. Oh, I'm afraid Mr. Holmwood is presently unavailable. Two thirty five PM. Two fifty PM. 3.05 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. Arthur isn't here. He's at a meeting with Mr. Stransikowski, a fellow member of the club. Yes, I've met Mr. Stransikowski. He's a rather odd man. Uh, but it is so sad. He was such a gifted composer before the death of his wife, Ileana. It was a carriage accident in Europe at a place called Borgo Pass. She was buried in London where her family rests. She must have been very beautiful. Oh, yes. Although I never met her. Uh, and the ceremony was a closed casket. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must deliver this present to the Harkers. Well, I'd be glad to do that for you, Mrs. Holmwood. Oh, why, thank you. But call me Regina, please. I had a strange conversation with Regina Holmwood today. She told me of Leopold Stransikowski's tragedy. I feel sorry for him. The death of a loved one is always bitter. And where will we be off to this fine day? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Good day, driver. Have a good day, sir. Mr. Stransikowski, how are you? So, it is the Texan seeking companionship in this time of loss. No, no, I just... <laughs> I you think you know of loss? I lost my wife. Oh, my poor Ileana. But she is not dead. No, she lives. I have seen her walking in the moonlight. Get hold of yourself, man. Oh, Ileana. <laughs> I went to the Hades Club and had a miserable encounter with Stransikowski. He was well into his cups and quite delirious. He believes his dead wife is alive and attempting to communicate with him. This gift was meant to be delivered to little Quincy Harker. Where will Batsy here be taking us today, sir? Please take me to 45 Fenchurch, St. Paul's. 
Good day, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. Regarding our previous agreement... Uh, Mr. Morris, how can I help you? I'm delivering this for the Homewoods. It was the gift their coachman was taking to Quincy before he... Yes, uh, well, thank you very much. I've come on personal business as well. I feel a bit foolish, really. I, I don't know where to begin. So many strange things that have happened, and, well, I have so many questions concerning yes, the... Well, I appreciate that you think I can help, Mr. Morris, but this is my business office, and I'm quite busy. I see. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Wait. Mr. Morris, please, I don't wish to appear careless. Here. Take this. A friend of mine gave this to Mina during troubled times. She would like Anna Set to have it to comfort her. Thank you, Mr. Harker. I went to speak to Jonathan Harker, but he seemed far more interested in his dictaphone than answering my questions about Quincy. I believe he's avoiding the topic, but he was kind enough to give me a gift for Anna Set. This cross necklace was a gift from the Harkers to Anisette. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. Come lay your weary troubled head upon my loving breast. Tomorrow brings the sun again, but now it is time to rest. Moonlight, hold you safe and warm, your brows the stars caress tomorrow brings the sun again but now it is time to rest a lovely song there you are leaving poor Anna set alone at a time like this you can come sit by me Alexander Juliet just stopped by to try and cheer me up She's offered to spend the night here. Always a pleasure to see you, Miss Adams. If anyone can make Anisette feel better, it's you. The Harkers have also been generous. Mina wanted you to have this necklace. Jonathan said that it had been given to them during a time of loss as well. You know, it's strange. I hate to say it, but last night I had a dream about your father passing away. I saw him lying there as peaceful as can be. He seemed to look up, and there was a woman standing beside him. She shone like an angel and reached for him. I saw his arms go to her, and all around him was flowing white. And then she turned away, and I woke up. I believe it was an angel come to take him to heaven. I feel her presence all around us. Even this cloth reminds me of my dream. May all of us go as peacefully. I'm so glad Juliet came to visit. Her very presence always seems to hearten Anisette. I just hope Anisette doesn't start having dreams like Juliet. Hopefully the Harker's necklace will make her feel somewhat better. Good evening, sir. Where can old Nellie take you tonight? Please take me to 20 Surrey, the Strand. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Good Lord, what was that? It was a wolf's howl, Governor. 
That's not a sound you want to be hearing around here. Last time I heard that, it meant death. The Demeter Wolf, they called it. Come off a ghost ship in a storm sent by the devil himself. Only one still aboard was a captain, dead. The beast fled that damn ship, first chance it got, running off to the devil knows where. None of us saw it again till it came after me, made swales. I was watching from the woods, too far away to help. I seen it coming after him, snarling as loud as all the demons of hell. My knees gave out as I seen it leap at him. The merciful Lord blessed me so I wouldn't remember what happened to him, but as I fell, I swear, that wolf reached for swales with two arms as human as yours or mine. Poor old soul. They never found the beast. It's still out there somewhere, waiting for its next victim. I heard the most interesting story at the Saucy Jack. The old man was actually shaking when he told me about the Demeter Wolf. Where would you like to go this foul evening, sir? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. I'm happy to say that we have found- Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. 11.15 p.m. Quincy's brother? I gladly shake your hand, sir. Your brother was a fine friend and a true gentleman. Well, thank you, sir. I was wondering if I might take a... I met my wits end for dealing with them. I can only think it is caused by the full moon. The red moon rising. So it's true, then, what they say about the moon and madness. The inmates often succumb to its influence. Farnsworth with his howling, Sherman drooling like a mad dog, and Renfield with his paranoid fits and ridiculous demands. It's almost as bad as the last time that... Yes, you were saying? I'm sorry I've bored you like this. I always ramble on about my work when I'm tired. Why don't you come back tomorrow after breakfast? All right, doctor. I went to the asylum and met Dr. John Seward. His work seems most demanding. I found it odd that he avoided telling me more about the inmates and the effects of the moon. Where will we be going tonight, sir? Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. A good day to you, driver. Right, have a good day, sir. That Alfred Horner is a strange man. The bookstore was closed when I got there, but I caught a glimpse of him through the window. He has a hidden room behind his shelves and was carrying a jar of what appeared to be blood. Good day, sir. Where might I be taken? Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Mr. Alexander Morris, 
The evil awakens. Beware the night. Nothing is safe. If you respect your dead brother's memory, send me your findings. Quincy's friends can verify my claims. Father Janos Kurtzeni. Nightmares like the one I had last night have unfortunately become all too common as of late. Well, off, sir. As soon as you tell me where you'd like to go. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Not a good day to you, driver. Have a good day, sir. 6.35 a.m. 6.50 a.m. 7.05 a.m. Oh, Alexander, I'm so happy you're here. Nana said, how are you? I'm fine, but I'm worried about Juliet. She's so pale and has said such strange things lately. She has even taken to sleepwalking. How are you, Juliet? I'm doing well. I had another dream, and now that you're here, I must tell it to you both. I saw Andrew again. Oh? Yes. He told me that he is happy now, that he is finally at peace. His worries and troubles are no more. And then we hugged, and he said that you needn't worry, Anisette, that he is watching over you. I believe he is in heaven now. That's beautiful, Juliet. Yes, but it's so odd. Father never showed affection to me. I know that he loved me, but I can't think of the last time he said so, much less hugged me. But he is free now, Anna said, free from pain. He flies with the angels. He is free to show his love. I'm all right. I think I've overworked myself a bit. I just need some rest. Thank you, Anisette. All this sleepwalking's taking its toll. Let it rest. I'm concerned about Juliet. She's so pale and has taken to sleepwalking. What could be disturbing her? In these dreams, they seem odd and unnatural. We're off, sir, as soon as you tell me where you'd like to go. I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge. Pa good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Is Dr. Seward available? If he's here, he's busy. I'll give him your card if I seize him. Nine o'clock a.m. Nine fifteen a.m. Here's one of the reasons I could not meet with you yesterday. A number of our patients have been keeping me busy, but none more so than he. It's over! All my life's over! No way out! No! There's no way out! Good Lord, I believe he has actually gotten worse. Life, life, the blood is the life, my lives, all the lives, but it's here, here, 
I tried, but no good. It's come back. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Good God, Doctor. Do you always let animals roam through the patient's rooms? Well, I... How did you get a hound in here? It's here. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Strange, the tracks seem to go from the window to the bed and then back again. Well, I don't see how Renfield could have made them. There's no other mud in the room. Never underestimate the mind of the insane, Alexander. I've known Renfield to be capable of... What? What is it, Doctor? What? Oh, uh, nothing. But it really is time I got back to work. I'm sorry I haven't been much help. You wanted information about your brother, and I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. However, I believe my old mentor may be of some help. Dr. Abraham Van Helsing. I don't envy Dr. Seward his position. Working with lunatics like Renfield is not a pleasant occupation. Whatever could that poor fellow mean? The blood is the life. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Here we a good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. I'm sorry, but Jonathan is not here. Oh, well, perhaps later. Well, pardon my curiosity, but are you going somewhere? Well, Quincy is going to visit his grandmother. Oh, well, during the holidays. It's been so long since she's seen him. And the country is lovely this time of year. Oh, I'm sure she'll be glad to have them. Grandparents thrive on the smiles of their grandchildren. I'd like to thank you for your gift to Anisette. The cross was very nice. Cross? Oh, uh, yes. An old family heirloom. I hope it comforts her. In exchange, may I present you with this? Oh, I thank you, Mr. Morris. Alexander. I'd like to talk to you tomorrow at Mr. Bowen's funeral. Very well. I spoke with Mina Harker today. She was polite, but I could tell she was troubled. They are sending little Quincy to his grandmother's, and I believe Mina already misses him. I wonder what she wants to talk to me about at the funeral. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? 23 Luxboro and King's Cross, driver. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Strits. In Romania. In Romania. I sent a telegram to Father Janos. It reads, Please send more information. Last message incomplete. What is the evil? What is the significance of the knife? Where will Betsy be taking us today, sir? Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. We're here, sir. A good day to you, driver. Right, have a good day, sir. Ah, Byron. Very good. That will be one pound. Very well. Oh my. What an interesting handkerchief. Oh, it's just a bit of cloth I found. Hmm. Perhaps you can tell me something about it. Afraid I can't help you there, but you might try the university. They have all sorts of scholars who can illuminate it for you. <laughs> Here, let me help. Oh, thank you. It's just a minor cut. It's never minor. 
where blood is concerned. Horner could not help identify the cloth, but he recommended I try the university. I'm afraid I disturbed him when I cut my finger. The sight of blood must make him nervous. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? Please take me to 45 Fen Church, St. Paul's. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Harker. I'm sorry I disturbed you at your home yesterday. Yes, well, what's done is done. Sir, I was wondering what you know about my brother's stabbing. Really, there's nothing to tell. It was an unfortunate incident, nothing which concerns us now. Well, sir, maybe you never suffered such a loss. But my brother's death will concern me until this matter is settled. Young man, what happened, happened. You should be happy with your memories of him. Memories? For God's sake, man, this is all I have left of him! There has never been a greater tragedy. I didn't want to involve you. Whatever it is, I'm already involved. It's too late to stop what I've begun. Tonight. Come to my house tonight. But leave me now. It may have taken a trip to his office, but I think I finally got through to that Mr. Harker. I wonder why he's so evasive. Now maybe with his help I can get to the bottom of what happened to my brother. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to... Please take me to 98 Rutherford. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. News ain't pretty today, Gob. There's been another murder. Mm. When will they catch the fiend? But this one's different. A lady was found. She still has her head, but not a drop of blood. Horrible. I bet the fella that's been doing this didn't have time to finish the job. The art's closing in on him. Just a matter of time now. I purchased a paper and clipped out some rather interesting articles. Obituary. On the 28th December, after months of suffering, the Honorable Andrew Bowen, aged 54 years, survived by loving daughter, Anna said Bowen, 19, to be interred 10 a.m. at St. Joseph's Cemetery, Paddington. Police suspect foul play in St. Pancras' death. Murder strikes again as the body of Mary Blythe, 27, was found in St. Pancras at 9 a.m. Miss Blythe, a seamstress for Caxton and Sons Clothiers, was discovered by one of her co-workers as the shop opened for business. The police report indicates cause of death as extreme blood loss. Unlike recent murders, the body was left intact. Investigators believe that the murderer may have been interrupted before he could complete his gruesome task. Miss Blythe survived by her mother. Entertainments. Lyceum Theatre, a two-week run of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, will begin tonight at 9 p.m. It is performed by the Royal Shakespeare Company. Admission is two pounds. We're off, sir, as soon as you tell me where you live. I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate. Good day, driver. Have a good day, sir. This is the strange white cloth I found in Andrew Bowen's hand. The interesting pattern. Ah, uh, yes. Those beautiful designs. Uh, roses, I believe. Oh, my. Oh, this 
cloth is over a century old. Where did you get this? Uh, I found it at my fiancé's house. Well, I simply must study it further. You must let me keep it and telegram you with the results of my research. You simply must. Certainly. I took the cloth to Randall Briarcliff at the university. He says it is more than 100 years old. If so, how did Andrew come to possess it? Where will Betsy here be taking us? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. I'm curious. Are you the Gold Acre of the Gold Acre and Horner Bookstore? Yes. Why does that interest you? Been doing some reading in the faint hopes of becoming cultured? Well, recently I've been to your store. That partner of yours is a rather odd fellow. <laughs> yes. Horner serves a purpose. That store is merely a hobby. It means no more to me than this coin. <laughs> Goldacre declared himself to be the controlling partner of the Goldacre and Horner bookstore. He doesn't seem to have much respect for Alfred, I'm afraid. We're off, sir. As soon as you can tell me where you'd like to go. I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. Alexander, so good of you to join us at this sad time. Would you care for some tea? No, thank you. I'm very sorry about your driver. I wish that there was something that I could do. No more than I wish I could do something for Anisette. Such a sad night. We've not had such sorrow since your brother passed away. You know, I never did discover the circumstances surrounding Quincy's death. You would have been proud. While on our travels, we were beset by common criminals. Quincy sought to defend us and was cut down for his heroism. He was a good man, your brother. His death meant more to me than you know. I feel sorry for my poor friends, the Holmwoods, on their recent loss. Thank heaven that my brother's passing was not like their drivers. Arthur's explanation of Quincy's death seemed to make sense. Why is Father Yana so concerned? Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? 56 Rochester and Marble Arch, driver. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. I'd like to see Mr. Harker, please. I'm sorry, he isn't here right now. Five forty five PM six o'clock six fifteen six thirty six forty five seven o'clock PM And uh, who be this? Professor Van Helsing? This is Alexander Morris, brother of Quincy Morris. How do you do, sir? I am very glad to meet you. If you be Quincy's brother, then your friend I am. Consider it so. Thank you. Let me say likewise, sir. Yeah, good. Uh, Jonathan is telling me you have a certain knife. Uh, may I see it? Yeah. Quincy's knife. Sir, I wish to uncover the truth about Quincy's death. I am telling all to you now, but uh, first, uh, sit, sit. I'm sorry you've waited so long, but the truth is unbelievable. Miss Mina, speak true. What would you say, Mr. Morris, if I am telling you vampires exist? Well, I'd say you're pulling my leg. <laughs> Spoken like a true Texan, yeah? But I know pull your leg. They are real, and your brother died while killing one. You can't be serious. But he is. Believe me, I know how hard it is to accept such things. Hear me out. 
It was ten years ago that business is taking Mr. Jonathan Harker to Transylvania and the castle of Count Dracula, the vampire. He who is lord over all the Nosferatu. Unknowingly, Mr. Harker arranged for him to be coming here to London. There he is sucking the blood of the innocent Miss Lucy Vestrina, she who was fiancé to Mr. Arthur Holwood. Well, this can't be true. But it is. I wired Van Helsing, but it was too late. Dracula killed Lucy. But no normal death, for she arise again in unlife. It bring us much pain to stop her. But now, she is resting with the angels. Then we hunt Dracula down. We found his caskets, full of the earth he needed to survive and destroyed them. We had succeeded. But then we discovered what he had done in our absence. He drank Mina's blood. He tried to make her like him, a creature of the night. But it is too late for him, and he must flee back to his castle across the sea. We are giving chase. Miss Mina's very soul is depending upon us. We finally catch him, and there, your brother is plunging this very knife into his breast. Such a victory. But no. Quincy is suffering terrible wounds at the hands of Dracula's gypsy servants. His last words are having no regrets. This is also impossible. This may help you. It's my journal of those trying times. I value it highly. I believe there is vampire walking the streets again. It is responsible for the murders. I know something of this. The blue for ladies. Yeah, yeah, there have been many blue for ladies. Lucy become one after she's suffering strange symptoms, sleepwalking and nightmares. But Juliet Adams, Anisette's friend, she has the same symptoms. I must be examining her. I finally met Professor Abraham Van Helsing. He told me the truth about Quincy's death. It's so strange, so macabre, but their earnest nature in Jonathan's journal convinced me. Can it be true when Van Helsing says there is a vampire stalking the streets, even now? Where will we be going tonight, sir? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Nodding. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. Anna said, I'd like you to meet Professor Van Helsing. Uh, very lovely girl. You are having my deepest sympathy on your recent loss. You're very kind, sir. Uh, please, when is the funeral? Ten o'clock in the morning at St. Joseph's Cemetery. I will be there. And this is Dr. John Seward. Pleased to meet you. And uh, who be this? Another young, lovely girl. Might is making an old man's heart feel young again, yeah? Oh, sir. <laughs> Professor Miss Juliet Adams. Oh, a lovely name. You will forgive me, Miss Adams, but as a doctor, I must be speaking bluntly. You do not look well for one so young. May I be examining you as a doctor to a patient? Really, I feel fine. <laughs> Dr. Van Helsing is the top in his field. You can trust him. All right. What is it, Doctor? What's wrong? Uh, not to worry, Miss Adams. Uh, I will be leaving some medicines in your room and around the house. Rest you need. Anna said she'll be watching you, yeah? Of course. You will be fine with me, Juliet. I'm not worried. I just wish Devlin would stop by. I've not seen him all day. Miss Anisette, I bid you whatever you do, do not be opening the windows. 
No matter what. Alexander, would you be a dear and give this to Devlin the next time you see him? I'm not sure I shall be able to. I'm very worried about Juliet. Dr. Van Helsing has discovered the bite of the vampire upon her and has left garlic in all the windows. This all seems so mad. How bad is it, Professor? She is bit by the vampire, but not so bad as to die yet. If she is bit again... I cannot believe it. It is too much like Lucy's ordeal. Yeah, but this time we know what it is. Come, you and I return to the asylum. We let Alexander go rest. Yeah. Now, Mr. Morris, the creature has fled. I owe you my life, sir. I wonder, did you happen upon her by accident? Or did she wait for you? I was attacked by the blue for lady. If it were not for Professor Van Helsing, I would have suffered a horrible fate. I owe him my life. I now believe absolutely everything he has said. This is the note that Juliet asked me to give to Devlin if I see him. Where will we be going tonight, sir? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Right on time, sir. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Morris, I didn't hear you. You creep in like a cat. I didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> Have you been to Anisette's? Is Juliet there? How is she? She's ill. But she did ask me to give you this. Oh, poor Juliet. Her world revolves around me. Why, I don't know. I love her. I would do anything for her, even die. It's me that's done this. I was in control, but now it's all slipping from my grasp. Devlin Goldacre was drunk when I saw him. It's obvious he loves Juliet, yet he doesn't visit her. He seems to be grappling with some mysterious problem. I took a ring of keys he dropped. I suspect I know what they open. This is the key ring I borrowed from Devlin Goldacre at the Hades Club. Good evening, sir. Where can old Nelly take you tonight? Please take me to 12 Oldbury. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir.
kind of European language. What's this? Interesting. As I thought, Horner's up to something strange. I wonder what's in that doctor's bag of his. Perhaps the manuscript I found can shed some light on what's going on, but first I must find someone who can translate it. Where would you like to go this far? Please take me to 20 Surrey, the Strand. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Oh, Bill went out into the night and had it over bed. He saw a pretty woman in white dress as the day she wed. She was really quite a fright of Bill began to dread. She gave him such an ugly bite. He bled and bled and bled and bled and bled and bled. I'm gonna put up a royal bite to cut up his blue It's a rather tasteless song. Oh, don't be too harsh on him. <laughs> They's frightened. I heard the regulars at the Saucy Jack sing a grisly song about the blue for lady. They may have been laughing, but their fear was apparent. Good day, sir. Where my Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. Good day, driver. Aren't a good day to you, sir. Mr. Alexander Morris, the knife was your brother's. Keep it safe. Beware the evil. Beware the vampire. Guard yourself well, Father Janos Corzini. Vampire? The circumstances of Quincy's death plagues me throughout the day and haunts me at night. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill, nodding. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Hello, Alexander. Would you like some breakfast? No, thank you. How are you feeling today, Juliet? Tired. So very tired. What have you done with the garlic? Dr. Van Helsing has put it up for Juliet's health. Oh, that's my doing. Juliet could barely breathe for that awful odor. I finally threw them out and opened a window for her. I'm sorry, my dear friend, but I don't think I shall be strong enough to see your father off. I feel as though I've been running. Just like in my dream. I feel so very weak. Oh, you silly goose. I wouldn't let you go to a dreary old funeral in your condition anyway. You stay right here and don't budge a muscle until we get back. I'll have Miss Culpepper stay here to keep you company. Oh, there's no need to do that. I'll stay with you while the others are away. Here. At least you can be with us in spirit. I have seen two things today that bother me terribly. First, the absence of the garlic Van Helsing left, and second, Juliet's refusal of the cross necklace. Certainly neither bode well. 7.30 a.m. We're 
off, sir. As soon as you tell me where you'd like... Please take me to 98 Rutherford, West. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. So, you come to read about our local ghouls. Or a bit of games that go. Pardon me? You ain't had. Dug up an entire cemetery they did. Took everything, coffin and all. Between you and me, and friend Max says whoever done it must have sneaked in during the day. He locks that place up tight as a drum at night. After picking up a paper, I pasted articles of interest in my journal. Grave robbers plunder St. Joseph's. Grave robbers have struck the cemetery of St. Joseph's in Paddington, taking a few of the recently deceased, coffins and all. Henry Breedlove, groundskeeper of the cemetery, believed that the actions took place between the hours of 1 and 2 a.m. Breedlove commented, I make my rounds and promptly close the gates at 8 p.m. It's impossible to enter the cemetery after that, but some scoundrel did. Anyone with information about this event should contact Scotland Yard immediately. Slasher victim found at dockyards. The slasher has struck again for the third time this week. The decapitated corpse of Earl Cranston, 63, was found in a barrel near the dockyards. He was bloodless like all the others. Scotland Yard has increased manpower on the case, hoping to capture the fiend. Mr. Cranston is survived by no one. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? Fifty six Rochester in Marble Art. Good day, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. Alfred Horner was kind enough to give me this book on the blue for lady. Jonathan Harker's journal is undoubtedly the most unbelievable story I have ever read. I chanced upon this illuminated manuscript in Alfred Horner's bookstore. I read your journal, Jonathan. To think all this happened, it's monstrous. Yes, I sometimes prefer to believe it was all the product of a fevered mind. But I know better. Indeed, had it not been for me, now I fear my senses would have deserted me completely during those trying days. I'm glad it helped you, but... But what? I fear there may be pages yet to be written. I return Jonathan's diary. I pray his fears are unfounded, but I suspect otherwise. Good day, sir. We're mo... I'd like to go to 33 Coventry, Paddington. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. 9.20 a.m. 9.35. 9.50, 10.05 a.m. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I would like to end this sad event by announcing that there will now be a gathering of the friends of Andrew Bowen at the home of Arthur and Regina Holmwood, Lord and Lady Godalming. Everyone is invited. Alexander. Have you met Reverend Jenkins? No, it's my pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Uh, Mina has told me something of your situation. I believe I may be able to send her something tomorrow morn which could help you. Thank you. Alexander, the Homewoods are about to leave. Oh, Lord and Lady Godalming, I must thank you for your kindness. Think nothing of it, my dear. Do you remember my old patient, Renfield? The bug eater. Yeah, very well. Well, recently... If ever there's began. anything I can do for you, please let me know. You're very kind. Attending Andrew Bowen's funeral brought back images of Quincy.
to think that vampires might have been responsible for both their deaths. It's unthinkable. This blackjack seems to be quite a deterrent against lunatics. And where can I take you today, sir? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. A good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. I'm glad you could join us, Alexander. Renfield has become even wilder than when you saw him. <laughs> so, the esteemed doctor comes to learn from me. <laughs> You're too late. Too late. Too late. The master has been reborn. Revived. Come, out with it. What do you mean? <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> The master will have his revenge. You're too late. <laughs> and then, then he will make me like him. <laughs> Doctor. You're too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> I guess now we're even. A life for a life. It does not matter. Nothing matter now. What men feel say is true. Mean we all dead men. First vampires and now lunatics. That's the second time I had to stop a madman. I may have saved Dr. Van Helsing's life, but I'm afraid I can't wash away his pain and sorrow. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? I'd like to go to 19 St. Aug. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. I can't thank you and Arthur enough for all you've done. I think nothing of it. So, where is young Quincy? Oh, we've sent him off to be with his grandparents. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, what with the holiday and all, you must be counting the days until his return. Actually, we've found ways to pass the time. I do wish Juliet could be here. I don't believe the two of you have met her. She's been quite ill recently. So, tell us about your wedding plans. Oh, I've already picked out a dress of the purest white. Father would have been so proud. I'm sure he would have, my dear. I'm sure he would have. The gathering at the Homewoods was pleasantly uneventful and certainly a kind gesture from Arthur and Regina. They are true friends. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate, Kensington. Right on time, sir. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. The stairs are down the hall. Go straight and you can't miss them. I'm sorry, I'm not looking for the way out. I'd hoped you could help me with this Romanian manuscript I found. What? Why didn't you say so? Here, have a seat. <coughs> Authentic? I do believe it is, yes. It appears to be a medieval book of magic. See, it's just filled with, with so-called spells. Here's one that's tied to an amulet of power. It also speaks about bringing the dead back to life. Oh, my, uh, let me just jot down a few notes, and I promise I will tell you more tomorrow. Oh. I don't know if Dr. Briarcliffe belongs at the university or in an asylum. Still, he may have hit on something with his amulet. I wonder what Van Helsing will say.
I've been given the most curious coin. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, it's not chocolate. No, <laughs> dear. Ah, yes, it's uh, from the Transylvanian Principality. Yes, it's, it's solid gold, but uh, not especially rare. I would say that your friend has recently holidayed on the continent. Briarcliff said that the gold coin Devlin gave me is from Transylvania. Intriguing. Where will Betsy here be taking us today, sir? Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Excuse me. Do you have any books on vampires? What? What did you say your name was? Alexander Morris, sir. Well, Mr. Morris, I would advise you to leave such things which do not concern you well enough alone. Those who unearth such things often end up in the earth. Unbelievable. Alfred Horner actually threatened my life today. I want to find out what his secret is, but I mustn't take his words lightly. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. Mr. Morris, I have examined the cloth you left me. It is close to 125 years old. I believe it is a burial cloth of a royal family. The Middle European weave supports this theory. The blood stain is recent. Randall Briarcliff. Middle European. I received a reply from Briarcliff concerning the cloth. It is indeed over a century old and is of Middle European origin. I wonder if I know anyone knowledgeable about that area. On where can I take you today, sir? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa. A good to you, driver. Aren't a good day to you, sir. Mr. Strasikowski, I hope you'll pardon the intrusion, but I understand you hail from Czechoslovakia. You see, I've come across the strangest fabric. I understand it's of Middle European origin. I was wondering if you might know something. My wife! You stole this from my wife! I buried her in this dress. Damn you! You stole this from my wife! You stole this from her! They lied. I knew she still lived. They lied. I'm coming, Ileana! Whenever I see Stransikowski, he acts even stranger than the last time we met. Now he claims the cloth I found in Mr. Bowen's hand belonged to his dead wife. Five fifty five PM six ten PM Where would you like to go this foul evening, sir? Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch driver. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. You are all wondering why I am calling this meeting, yeah? Huh? Well, you all come here for the same reason ten years ago. Count Dracula, the Prince of Darkness. Once again, he has risen from beyond the grave. Impossible. It can't Not be. Oh. Uh, Brandy, quickly. Yeah, I am feeling like Mina when I am discovering the truth. Now, I am ready for what we must do. But you helped us kill him. 
You assured us we had nothing to fear. Once we had no fear. Now, I am telling you what I find. Miss Juliet Adams has the Nosferatu bite on her young neck. That doesn't mean it's Dracula. You yourself said he isn't the only vampire. There be more, my impetuous friend. I am seeing our old nemesis Renfield. I know he has once again fallen under Dracula's power. I believe it as strongly as in anything I ever believe. But how could he come back? What could he possibly want with Juliet? That I am afraid I do not know. Actually, I believe I may have come across something. At the Goldacre and Horner bookstore, I chanced upon an odd Romanian manuscript. Dr. Briarcliff at the university said it uh, mentioned a spell to bring back the dead and an amulet of power. It could well be that this is somehow tied to Dracula. After all, Juliet is Devlin Goldacre's fiance. Yeah, all these things, they may well be connected. I must be thinking on this. To work we get. Jonathan, from your office we work. Mina, we spare you the invasion of your home. Alexander, you see to Miss Anacet. Help her to be watching Juliet. Let me know when our Dr. Briarcliff is telling you more. I'll check with some other solicitors and see if we can pinpoint the demon's havens. I'm going to check on Regina. I'll not lose another to that fiend. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, my friend. Van Helsing's story may have put the fear of God into our friends, but they seem more than capable of the task at hand. I feared the news might drive them away, but they seem more than willing to carry out whatever Van Helsing may be planning. Well, gentlemen, we meet again on the morrow. Yes, that will be fine. Doctor, just how powerful is this count? Oh, he can do many things. Powers of storm and beast are just a few. How did you stop that wolf? Wolfsbane. Why would a wolf run from this? I'm afraid that was no mere wolf. We must be checking on the others. Make sure they're all right. What are you waiting for? Once more, I owe Dr. Van Helsing my life, for there can be no doubt that Dracula wants me dead. But why would the Count risk attacking me with a professor present? Where would you like to go this foul evening, sir? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Both Anisette and Juliet have gone to sleep, blissfully unaware of the threat hovering over us. So that they may rest, I shall watch over them this night. What's wrong, Alexander? What are you doing here? Don't be frightened. Alexander. After all, Alexander, it's only a game. <laughs> what you doing at sleep? We are the ladies. Oh dear Lord, quick! We have no time to lose! You are too late for Miss Adams. But we may yet save Anaset. Anaset? I mean, what happened? How did he get in? You, you leave now. You no good to us like this. Harker's office tomorrow morning. We give her fresh blood. But you, you leave. So it's my bag in the front hall. I can't believe I let this happen. That vile creature has befouled sweet Anisette, and Juliet lies murdered. How could I have failed him so?
7 o'clock a.m. We're off, sir, as soon as you tell me where you'd like to go. 56 Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Here we are, sir, safe and sound. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. Mina? Over here, Alexander. He sent it. Reverend Jenkins. He sent it. Mina had Reverend Jenkins consecrate a cross for me. It makes me feel safer somehow. Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? 23 Luxboro and King's Cross, driver. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I'd like to send an overseas telegram, if I may. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Bistritz. In Romania. Romania. I sent a telegram to Father Jana saying, Dr. Van Helsing's help has been indispensable. We are on the trail of Count Dracula himself. God help us. And where can I take you today, sir? Please take me to 45 Fench. A good day to you, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Good morning, Alexander. Where's Arthur? I would have expected him here leading the charge. He sent a message saying he had to attend his coachman's funeral this morning, but hoped to meet us after Juliet's funeral at noon. When I checked on them after our scare last night, Regina said they hadn't seen anything, much less a wolf. I think they're all right for now. Excuse me, message for Dr. Seward? For me? Good Lord! There's been a fire at the asylum. At least one person is dead, and several more are trapped. I must be off at once. Yeah, we all need to be about our duties. We meet the dinosaur after Juliet's funeral. Oh, I can't wait, wait, I almost forget. I need a steak so big and pointy. Oh, and a mallet too. Good boy. Yeah. Seward seemed ill after getting his message and must deal with a fire at the asylum. Things are happening so quickly now, and I fear that after the funeral, everything will be out of control. And where can I take you today? Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. I have just finished interpreting your manuscript and found it absolutely fascinating. The most fantastic part refers to this ancient amulet of power. Not only would it be part of a ceremony to raise the dead, but it would allegedly allow its wearer to appear as anything or anyone he desired. This amulet would not operate on its own, however, requiring a user already powerful with magic. I have reason to believe the trinket this legend is based on may really have existed. Please see me at your earliest convenience. Respectfully, Dr. Randall Briarcliff. Dr. Briarcliff's message may be the clue to clearing up this mystery. Mere days ago, I would never have believed such an amulet could exist. Now. Dear Alexander, this is a dictaphone recording of my last conversation with Renfield, made the night before he died. It did not strike me as surprising then, but now, please listen to it. I need someone to confirm my suspicions. Dr. John Seward.
Dr. Seward sent me a dictaphone tube he wants me to listen to. Now, where have I seen a dictaphone? And where can I take you today, sir? I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate, Kensington. Good day, driver. And a good day to you, sir. Dr. Breyer! I'm still weak from my shock at the university. May I never again see a sight as horrifying as that. Why do I feel like Dracula knows my every move? And where will we be off to on this fine day? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. <laughs> Good God, what a mess. If you're waiting for Dr. Seward, it'll be a while. He's gonna be busy for some time. <laughs> Dr. Seward's asylum was a wreck. I wonder if the vampire had anything to do with the fire. I feel bad about taking the stake and mallet, but I have a feeling we'll need them. 12 o'clock, p.m. And where can I take you today, sir? I'd like to go to 33 Coventry. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. She's got loved ones to come see her off. I pity about that feller earlier. I guess no one wanted to see a headless corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I says, you gotta make what friends you can while you're still alive. That way, it ain't so lonely when you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Another funeral, this time for dear Juliet. If only I could believe she truly rests in peace. But that is not the case. Action must be taken. Good day, sir. Where might I be taking you? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. That's disgusting. We must be doing it and doing it tonight. If we do not drive a stake into Juliet Adams immediately, heaven help those who be her next victim. Well, I've had no luck tracking the demon down. I've checked with every shipping clerk I know. I suppose Dracula doesn't make the same mistake twice. Our only option now seems to be stopping Juliet. All the death we have already seen. Even Renfield is dead, having been consumed in the fire at my asylum. I don't know if I'm capable of joining you tonight. Today's events have left me rather weak. I'll stay here with Seward. After all, any state's already been attacked once. 
This way I can stay close to Regina. That sounds like a good idea, my friend. The rest of us is meeting at the cemetery before dark. I did not look forward to the plan Van Helsing has proposed, but I know that it is the only way. I hope we are prepared to carry it out. We're off, sir. As soon as you can tell me where you... Please take me to 20 Surrey, the Strand. A good day to you, driver. Right, have a good day, sir. Why, Mr. Morris, I got a message for you, Ducky. It's from a Mr. Olmwood. Alexander, I've discovered something of urgent interest to the both of us. Please meet me at my house at 9 p.m. tonight. I received a note from Arthur asking me to meet him at his house at 9 p.m. I wondered what he could want. To 5 p.m. This dictaphone tube was sent to me by a very concerned Dr. Seward. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today? Please take me to 45 Fen Church. A good day to you, driver. Good day, sir. Of course I recognized you, sir. Mr. Harker left specific instructions to help you or his other friends in any way I can. The dictaphone is on his desk. Is there any other way I can help? No, you've been most kind. Very well. Call me if you need anything. Whatever possessed you to attack Van Helsing? Do you not value your own safety, your own life? Life? <laughs> what, what do you know about life? <laughs> this team doctor knows nothing about life. There is life after life. 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 Renfield always had an unsettling effect on me. But for some reason, this interview was very disturbing. And where can I take you today, sir? Please take me to 98 Rutherford. A good day to you, driver. Right. Have a good day, sir. Good morning, Gov. Looking forward to celebrating the new year? Out with the old, in with the new? I certainly hope to be celebrating. Why, Gov, there's plenty to be happy for. If nothing else, the coppers has almost solved the slasher case. So me, I'm looking forward to bringing in the new year right. After all, by this time next century, we'll have world peace, cured all diseases, and in famine, be riding around in the moon. I kept a number of curious articles that I read in the paper. Please closer to solving Slasher case. Scotland Yard announced that they are close to capturing the murderer who is responsible for putting London into the largest state of panic since the Ripper. Investigators report that they have come upon an important clue which will bring the fiend to justice. To the editor of the Times. Sir, the century is rapidly reaching a close and most Londoners are viewing it with trepidation and fear. It seems that violence and murder are becoming an everyday occurrence in our fur city. I, for one, see the new epoch as a chance for England to lead the world into a reign of enlightenment. This bloodshed that curses humanity will end and England will shine as a beacon. God save the Queen, Lord Godot. 
please crack down on drunk carriage drivers. Police will now arrest and lock up anyone who drives carriages under the influence of alcohol. Parliament has given Scotland Yard the permission to stop and examine drivers the police view as troublesome. On where can I take you today, sir? I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's. Well, a good day to you, driver. Aren't a good day to you, sir. Hello, Alexander. Won't you come in for a cup of tea? No, thank you, Regina. Is Arthur about? No, I'm sorry. He went out on business earlier. Is there anything I can help you with? No, I don't want to bother you at this sad time. How was the funeral this morning? Oh, it was sad. But still a moving ceremony. Well, it is the comfort to us all knowing that there is life after life. Well, thank you for your time, Regina. Please tell Arthur I called. It is always a pleasure to chat with Regina Holmwood. She is surely one of the most polite people I've ever met, and a comfort in such trying times. Where well, will Batsy here be taking us today? Please take me to 21 Scar. Good day, driver. Good day, sir. Oh, my poor Juliet. But she's still alive, Horner. She's still alive. He doesn't care about that, Devlin. He doesn't care about anything but himself and his own bloody desires. He has his own plans. We should never have freed him. Now we're trapped. Trapped by our own hands. Trapped? We're trapped? No, we're not trapped. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. A secret chamber in the Hades Club. I swear that the voices behind the wall were that of Devlin and his lackey, Alfred Horner. I believe Goldacre is going mad. Where will Betsy be taking us today, sir? 56 Rochester in Marble. Good day, driver. Right, have a good day, sir. Are you all right, Mrs. Harker? <laughs> Call me Mina, please. I'm fine, really. Well, you seem worried about something, Miss Mina. <laughs> Miss Mina is what Quincy used to call me. Can I confide in you, Mr. Morris? Certainly. I am very disturbed. I see glimpses of the Count in my mind. How? How is this possible? I carry a bond with him from years ago. At times I see him as though through a fog. What do you see now? It may help us find him. He appears different than before, but familiar. He seems close to us. Very close. I am glad to know Mina Harker trusts me. But I'm worried for her. She still has a psychic rapport with Dracula, but she sees only hazy images of him and cannot yet identify the fiend. I fear this stake and mallet will perform a most grisly task. And what part of our beautiful city would you like to see today, sir? I'd like to go to 33 Coventry. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. <laughs> Before the dark becomes the day, night's journey must progress. Into a dark and silent place With dreams miraculous I'm here, my love. Don't cry. Shh. Let me kiss you.
Commander! Jonathan! Quick, come! What about Devlin? Leave him! His mind is no more! <laughs> Mina? No! Alexander, help me! I'm here, Alexander. No, Alexander! It's not here! No, Alexander! <laughs> On top of everything else today, now I have helped kill Juliet Adams. I know she was already dead, but her scream will haunt me for the rest of my life. 6.50 p.m. Good evening, sir. Where can old... Please take me to 20 Surrey. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Oh, nothing, Rebecca. I just found the most curious drawings. Oh, well, that is odd. Oh, that must have been left by your friend, Mr. Goldacre. Oh, that's a peculiar bloke, that one. He was standing right where you is now, muttering away. Devlin Goldacre continues to amaze me. Why would he leave a napkin covered with drawings of crosses at the Saucy Jack? What could he be up to? Where will we be going tonight, sir? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. You fools! You fools! How you do this? You sleep and the monster will come! Stay back, you fool! But how did Dracula get in here? Well, if none of you is protecting Anna then it fall to me. Also, I must hypnotize her as I once do mean. Oh, I pray we find out what the demon be up to. Is that wise? Won't that tip Dracula off to our plan? Then? What plan? We have no plan. But, Doctor, what can I do? Anything? Anything at all? Do I look like an old man? Out, out, all of you. You're no good to me here. How could I have let this happen again? I should have stayed with Anaset and fought that beast with my own hands. I fear for Van Helsing's safety. Good evening, sir. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. I believe you are ready to hear the entire ghastly story. A dark and horrific ceremony took place at Castle Dracula on the first day of this year. A group of men, cloaked head to toe, summoned that which could not die, but was dead. It walks the earth again, but needs the life's blood of an innocent to make its unholy form permanent. Then it will lead us all into a new century of darkness and chaos. Would that I was well enough to help you. You must destroy the evil and scatter it to the four winds. Can this be Dracula's plan? Could the corruption of an innocent soul return his immortality and lead him to the destruction of all we hold dear? 9.10 p.m.
Where will we be going tonight, sir? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Stop! Stop? <laughs> you think you could stop me? I will come back from the grave again and again. I will kill you and all your friends and feast upon your blood. <laughs> Doctor! Quickly, we must get him to my house. We can have Mina stay with Anisette. You... you... Uh, debt paid... again? <sighs> Dracula, the demon himself. I felt his raw evil as soon as I saw him. I swear that I will do everything in my power to stop him before he can kill again. Good evening, sir. Where can... 56 Rochester in Marble Arch Drive. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. I agree with your self-diagnosis, Doctor. You appear to have suffered a stoppage of the heart. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Mina, what are you Anna doing Anna said, here? where is Anna set? Mr. Goldacre told me Van Helsing wanted to talk with me right away. He said he would watch Anna set. Van Helsing is sent for no one. <coughs> Rest, Doctor. Don't try and talk. Holmwood! Holmwood is... Off. Jonathan, what's wrong? Anna set! Things have become desperate. I must stop Dracula immediately. I fear that the lives of Anisette and all my friends hang in the balance from this moment forward. Good evening, sir. Where can old Nell... I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Thank you, driver. Good night, sir. Anisette! Anna said is gone, but where? Good evening, sir. Where can... I'd like to go to 19 St. August. Thank you, driver. Good evening to you, sir. Regina, where's Arthur? Regina! Regina? Dracula must have slain poor Regina months ago. Somehow he has used his accursed amulet to reanimate her and make her appear alive. I was a fool not to see the link between Devland, Arthur, and the Hades Club earlier. Where can I take you today, sir? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale. A good day to you, driver. Right, have a good day, sir. Don't bother struggling, my dear. Your pain will soon be over. Dracula! No, you are not he. But he will be here soon, very soon. You see, he needs Anaset. And he will do to her as he's done to my Juliet. Devlin, you're mad! Mad? No. Brilliant. You see, he will come. I've baited the trap. And now he will find out who the true master is. Oh, Anaset, I'm so sorry I put you through this. I 
Look at Chuck. Dear friends, we're together again. Oh, Arthur, thank heaven you're here. He's not Arthur. No. I slew him and his wench months ago. Now no one can hear your screams, Alexander, as I flay the very flesh from your body. And you, my dear Alicent, with you by my side, I will be ready to reign again, ruling the night for all eternity. Stop, David! Come no further! <laughs> you hope. I am Lord of the Nosferatu. I have ruled the dark for centuries, I'm told. Do you really believe this mere trinket can stand between me and my bride? gave them no warning he had returned. Thank heaven it's over. Yeah, it is over, my friends. And we are all alive. Dracula is gone forever.
Oh! <laughs> 